After looking at the context variables, trigger dot new, trigger dot old, trigger dot new map, trigger dot old map, it is time to look at the other context variables which we have got in Apex triggers. Let's have a look over here. So there are uh, different different context variables that we have got now, like is insert, is update, is delete, is undelete, is before, is after, size, and like what all. There are some others as well, uh, but we are going to discuss these only. So these context variables tell you that which uh, trigger context it is. Like if the trigger execution is happening because of an insert operation, then this is insert is going to return true. But if the trigger execution is happening because of an update database operation, then in that case, this will return false. And if the trigger execution is uh, happening because of is delete, uh, no, not is delete, but uh, the trigger execution is happening because of uh, a delete database operation, then in that case, it will, uh, the, like is delete will return true, but the is update and is insert is gonna return false. So it helps you understand the context of the trigger or basically the database operation uh, because of which uh, this trigger execution is happening. So we've got is insert, which returns true if the database operation is uh, insert. Uh, we've got is update, which returns true uh, if the database operation is update and otherwise uh, false. Similarly is delete and similarly is undelete. We've also got is before and is after. This basically returns that whether uh, we are like, we are in the before trigger uh, or yeah, I mean, so let me tell you why do we actually need to identify whether uh, this the execution of this trigger is happening before uh, because of a before trigger or because of an after trigger. Because in some triggers, we add both before insert and after insert, right? In the same trigger, we add both of these trigger events. So in that case, if we want to execute different logic for before insert and we want to diff uh, execute different logic for after insert, then in that case, this is, uh, this context variable is before and is after will help us identify that the execution of this trigger is happening because of uh, the before trigger event or the after trigger event and that is where it is helpful and when it comes to size it, it basically returns the number of uh, s object records uh, which are there because of which this trigger execution got initiated so that's what it is so over here I've created a very simple program uh, I've just created like a, a simple if else if else loop uh, in which what I've done over here is uh, and by the way in this trigger on contact object I've got each and every uh, trigger event before insert before update before delete after insert after update after delete I've got every trigger event in here and uh, yeah I mean inside it what I've done is trigger dot is before so this context variable uh, like uh, it will return true if the execution of this trigger is happening because of a before trigger events execution. Uh, then if it is true, then we'll identify whether it is uh, an insert database operation because of which it is happening or an update one or a delete one. So accordingly, if you just want to write down a single, uh, so okay, by the way, in this program, what we have done is, we do not want multiple triggers to be created onto a single object. And let me tell you the reason behind that. If you create multiple triggers on a single object, then in that case, uh, you cannot actually control the flow of execution of all those triggers. Like let's say we've got trigger one, trigger two, trigger three, right? All on the same object, let's say contact. There might be a situation in which, and, and all of them have got the same uh, trigger events as well. So which one will get executed first and which one will get executed later on? This is something that you actually cannot predict. So in order to maintain the order of execution for different different logics, generally this is the best practice that you need to do that you should write down only a single, listen to me once again, only a single uh, trigger onto a particular object and with the help of these context variables, you should define the different different logics inside these blocks which we have created in here. Like, so in this block, we can write down whatever we want to uh, write down in, uh, as a logic into the before insert trigger because if anything is entering into this block, then it is definitely a before insert triggers execution. That is why uh, this is before is also returning true and this is insert is also returning true. So this, this is the block for before insert. Similarly, this is the block for before update and this is the block for before delete. And if uh, it is not a before trigger, uh, then it must be an after trigger. So in this blog, uh, 
we, we like we have is after uh, that means it's an after trigger uh, because of which the execution of trigger is happening and this is is insert again so this block stands for after insert trigger similarly this block stands for after update and this block stands for after delete uh, and this one stands for after undelete so this example that i've shown you over here will be helpful for us to understand later on uh, a, a topic which is very important for all of us that is trigger helper class design pattern uh, we'll leave it to till then only but meanwhile what you have to understand is that these trigger context variables returns true or false depending on to the context uh, because of which the execution of trigger is happening like if it is a before trigger it will return true for is before and uh, it will return true if it is an after trigger for trigger dot is after context variable i hope you understood the context variables